I was so intrigued watching you, and I don't say it a lot because I've watched a lot of dog trainers, and I love watching dog tra- good dog training. I like watching bad dog, bad dog training too, but watching you with these dogs. Now, at that time, you were training a lot of elite special forces, and I, 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 I'm kind of walking on eggshells. I don't want to say like SEALs or, or, or no. special ops or anything like that because that would put you in a position where you'd have to say, I'm not allowed to disclose that, right? Like right, I, and... And um, these guys were just, uh, again, cool dog, cool guys with cool yeah. dogs. So, like, nobody would say they were, like, the top Navy SEAL dogs or the top no. special forces no, dogs. No, it wasn't like that. No, nobody was from either one of those organizations. None of those organizations kind of Nothing. Yep. Yeah. Nope. No specials. Okay, nothing. They're just cool guys. Cool guys, yeah. And keep our country safe. Yep. Right? Yep. And those are the guys you deal with every day. Right? Yeah, you know, and... and I am nothing, you know, we were talking about the martial arts stuff. Yeah. You know, I am the sword sharpener for the samurais. It might be a boring chat for some people because there's a lot of stuff I want you to talk about that you can talk about, but you're not allowed to talk about. Yeah, we don't talk about Fight Club. We never talk First about rule. Fight Club. First rule of Fight Club is? Don't talk about Fight don't Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> so some of the stories you shared with me earlier, we can't really talk about, but... You've got an exceptional background. If I say something that's wrong, just say, hey, I can't say that. But yeah. you um, started out as a police officer. You, um, you're the military expert for special operations dogs or whatever. I mean, I, I don't even know how to say it without, I don't want to get, I don't want to, some special forces guys coming after me. Yeah, so I just say um, tactical dogs. Okay. Cool, doing cool things with cool people with cool dogs. Okay. But you've pretty much trained the elite of the elite dogs in the military. Yeah, I'm pretty fortunate. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'd say that's right. Actual, yep. So how does that start? How do you go from being a kid in school, maybe here and they're getting your ass kicked, to becoming like the, the number one guy that people would turn to to say, hey, we need dogs that are man stoppers, mm-hmm. that have no fear, that... We can send into areas where no other, no other person, no other dog can go. What was your journey? I know you were a police officer. Mm-hmm. And tell me about that. Tell me how you started in dogs, like you working dogs and all that. Yeah, so it was a, a, a long road to hoe. I uh, started out as a dog lover ever since I could remember. Right. And um, my first dog was a standard poodle, of all things, named Snuffy, a female. <laughs> And, uh, but I never thought it would turn into a profession. Uh, like I told you today, it wasn't a well thought out plan. Mm -hmm. Things just happened. Yeah. Um, I left high school, went in the Marine Corps, was an infantry guy in the Marine Corps, nothing to do with dogs. When I got out, I became a police officer and they had a canine unit that I wanted to really get into canine really bad. And they didn't have slots open. <laughs> right. So I thought I'm going to work dog somehow. So I bought a golden retriever puppy and there wasn't a lot of training opportunities back then. And I happened upon a field trial gun dog club that I went to with my golden retriever. Okay. And, uh, learned a lot from that. And then I went to the canine unit and I said, Hey, I'll buy my own dog. If you let me get into canine, you were going to buy your own dog to take into the police force. Yeah. The, you know, that was, and they said, well, if you want to buy your own dog, then okay. Uh-huh. And I had to take out a $6,500 loan, which was big money back in 1989. Wow. And it was so crazy. My uncle was actually the branch manager for a bank and I went to him and he refused me. <laughs> Didn't give your me own uncle loan. wouldn't lend you money. No, he said crazy. <laughs> Why, who would give right. you 6,500 for a dog? Right. So I went to one of those, uh, high percentage loan companies. Right. I'm not going to say the name of the company because like they're, they're still in business. <laughs> okay. And I took a $6,500 loan out, got my, uh, I got referred to a guy named Gene England in Bowling Green, Kentucky. He was a Schutzen trainer of some renowned, okay. I think nationally known. I've heard of him. Uh, and, uh, he said, I want to match up the dog with the type of person. He talked to me for a couple hours and he said, I'll call you when I have a dog for you. And I, and all this kennel was full of German shepherds and I, wanted a German shepherd so bad. Okay. He called me like two weeks later. He said, Steve, we found your dog. And uh, I said, oh, you had a German shepherd? He said, no, a, a Malinois. And I'm like, what the hell is a Malinois? Right. Never heard of him. Right. I go down there and he said, uh, 
to have a seat in my office. I'm going to bring your dog in to, you, to meet your dog. And he brings in this 50-pound coyote-looking dog. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I said, Gene, I, I, need, a, I need a tough dog. And yeah, real said, dog. Yeah. And he said, this is a tough dog. And back then, I knew nothing about it. I went through his little six-week school, dual purpose, okay. aggressive response, okay. narcotics, scratcher. Wow. And uh, patrol dog training. Okay. And then, thank goodness, after that, I met the right people that really helped me along. Wow. Um, but, however, I had to pay for this dog, $6,500. I'm on the hook for a $120 a month for the next several <laughs> years. And so, uh, my uncle was an attorney, and I said, hey, how can I, can I form some sort of fund and raise money with car washes or whatever to pay for my dog? Uh -huh. And that was how I started the organization, Dogs Against Drugs. Right. And which eventually became Dad Act, Dogs Against Drugs, Dogs Against Crime. Right, and it turned right. out to be a big thing. Wow. Just so that's the beginning. That's chapter one. Okay, so that's so this dog, you have no experience in protection dogs. You have trained Zero. a hunting dog. Zero. And just enough to be dangerous in right. the hunting the hunting dog right. club. But I had a lot of fun <laughs> and learned something. Right. And then from there, so then you say you and you're in Indiana at this point. Indiana, too, right? Yep. And you were a beat cop? Yep. Okay. Patrolman. Okay. So yeah. you wanted you a canine. So you get this dog. And what happens first day on the job? You go, okay, you know what? I bought my dog. He's my 65 year old dog. And you get on the job. So, yeah. So it was, uh, I first get, I get on the job. But here's, let me back up. So yeah. when I picked up the dog from Gene, he said, take him home for two weeks and treat him like a girlfriend. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, take him, let him ride around a lot and feed him and talk nice to him. Okay. Treat him like a girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> right. So my, when I brought the dog back, my supervisor said, uh, you haven't been to a school yet. The dog can be in the police car, but do not get your dog out of the car ever until you complete your school. And I said, okay. And about a, three days into, the, into having my dog in the back seat, not getting him out of the car, one of my buddies said, hey, Steve, let's take your dog and walk him around. It was a bar called the El Morocco. <laughs> and El, the El Morocco was a rough bar that was known for shootings, fights, uh, some drug dealing. Okay. And I thought, okay, we'll walk him around. I'll show my dog off a little bit. Contrary right. to what my, the marching orders that I had. <laughs> right, 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 right. So <laughs> we get the dog out of the car and I'm going to walk him around. And a guy who shall go unnamed, but a, a known troublemaker, rabble rouser, walked up to me and he said, uh, that dog, I'm going to eat your dog. And I'm worried about my dog because I got this little 50-pound Malinois. Yeah. I know nothing about protection work. Right. It's your girlfriend. It's my girlfriend. Right. And I'm like, hey, step away from my dog because, you're, you know, I, I, you know I, th I thought he was scaring my dog. Yeah. The guy lunged at my dog. And before I knew it, my dog jumped up and bit this guy right in the forehead. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I happen to have the best supervisor, a guy named Leon Wazalewski. Uh -huh. And uh, we smoothed it out. And there was the only repercussion was uh, being chewed out by my lieutenant. Oh, yeah. You know, the, it was 1989. Times right. were different back then. Yeah, no cell So that was my opening. My, my, my opening to, to dogs right. wasn't so <laughs> skillful and not, professional. Not a, not a calm dance into no. the dog world, right? So, yeah, yeah. So that was my start. And, uh, but then... Uh, so he, now he gets one, one bite. He got one bite. Right. And it was, the guy was out of line actually. For sure. Totally. For sure. Uh, but I couldn't believe my little soaking wet 50 pound dog. Was it a female or male? Male. Oh, it was male. A male. His name okay. was Zane. Oh, okay. So that's Zane Stoops. Yes. Okay. Zane that's Stoops. a legend, right? And so I named myself after the, after that dog, that's Zane. Funny. Yeah. That's funny. The little, okay. the little dog that made me. That's amazing. Okay. So now how old, how old was Zane when you got him? Uh, he was like 15 months old. So he was a, an IPO dog, Schutzen dog. No, he then. wasn't. He was uh, an AKC registered Malinois from Laredo, Texas. Oh my That's God. born, so show born domestically. No, I, he was ugly. I don't know what kind of show oh, he'd be in. Ugly show. in a good way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but not impressive. Yeah, in, in except looks. to the family, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I loved him. <laughs> of course, right? Uh, but the thing is, I bumped into the right people uh, after I left the uh, school, I bumped into a guy, you know, Mike Deal. Oh, yeah. So as I was telling you earlier, mm. I was in the right place at the right time. Indiana had a very good group of dog trainers, and so did Southern California. 
yep. and Western Canada was that was like the if we put it in rock and roll terms, it was like the London Haight Ashbury, okay, Los Angeles of, of rock and roll in the in the mid sixties, right? But Indiana, California. This was in the late eighties, late eighties, early nineties. Okay, so California had all the tactics, like uh, wow, and but we had some good dog people in Indiana. We had Ken Licklider, Mike Deal. Uh, wow. Some people that ended up being movers and shakers in the dog world. Big time. And then on the West Coast, you know, I, I ran into some uh, very good dog trainers out there that taught me right. tactical stuff. But uh, So how long did you have Zane with you? Zane, uh, probably about four years because later I donated him to a police officer in Oklahoma, okay. a guy named Justin Hutchison. He had taken a, he had been shot on a call uh, where they needed a dog oh, on, on a SWAT entry. And when I heard about it, I gave Zane up to him, and I took on a new dog. Okay. And that's that's back when, after Dadak took off, I started buying police dogs for mm-hmm. departments that couldn't afford them. Now, you love dogs. I know that from having talked oh, to yeah. you, you, you love... How hard was that? Because I always think, man, if I train... Like, that's why I can't afford and train dogs. Yeah. Like, how hard was that for you to go, I love this dog. This is my first dog. I yeah. paid $6,500. I'm still paying him off. Yeah. And now you hand this dog over to somebody else. How does so, that work? It sounds callous that I would give my oh, dog up, uh, but... Uh, I thought I can help this other guy. Mm-hmm. And I actually had a very good friend in Ken Licklider. Got it. Ken Licklider um, b- basically gave me my next dog. Okay. He's a buddy. And so I love take the, the challenge of taking on and training a new dog was equal. It uh, mitigated any sorrow I felt for giving Zane up, but I felt good okay. about giving Zane to Justin. Right. Okay. And then Zane ultimately passed away of natural causes. Okay. Yeah. So you know he had a good life. Right? Oh, he had a there great was, life. There's yeah. no issue there. Like it wasn't like, yeah. but it was, it was still was it hard? Like did you cry? I cried I'm when sorry, he died. Okay. Oh, you did yeah. like a baby. Oh, shit, would, yeah. But uh, actually, like I was happy to help Justin out. Yeah. And, and uh, Zane was a kick-ass dog, and I knew he was like uh, he was going to make officers on that department a lot safer. Yeah. So. But that's so that's like an amazing thing that that gift that you have to have to do what you do. On one side, I see a lot of trainers who. Okay, they like dogs, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't love dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, I love dogs, yep. right? And, like, when my dog dies, it's literally, like, I mean, I remember when my dad got murdered and died. And I remember when my dog, my Sharpay, died. And I was a basket case when my, my Sharpay died. Yeah. I was devastated when my dad died. But, I mean, like, seeing this. And I want to kind of get into that a little bit today with our chat because you've seen through your work with special forces or the military and all this you've really seen a lot you've seen dogs and i watched you train um a couple weeks ago and that's why i wanted you on the show because you did something that i've never seen anybody do and we both come from a very strong martial arts background but you take a black belt and you turn him into a special forces soldier i saw you do that with dogs Mm -hmm. right because a dog is in great danger like my dogs bite you know, we took them out, we put a couple of bites on them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't send my dog into a mission in Iraq or Afghanistan or Pakistan. I would never do it because I know my dog couldn't come out. Mm-hmm. What's the mindset? And I know this originated, you said, with police work, mm-hmm. right? Because it's the military. Let, let's, let's, look at, let, let's look at this whole genesis of dogs in the military. Originally, they had patrol dogs. What, where was that point, that epiphany, when the military said, we need to go get bite dogs. We need to get dogs that are going to go in and get somebody as opposed to patrol dogs. Um, so I'll back up a little bit. So the uh, an irony, my grandfather was a Marine dog handler in World War II. You never told me that. No. Okay. <laughs> he, held, he handled the Doberman, and he fought in the 1st Marine Division in Peleliu. Wow. Okinawa was a... Was a uh, was a, was a handler, so maybe it courses through the veins, right? Yeah. Uh, however, this, the the genesis for, uh, we'll just say, cool guy canine, tactical okay. dogs in the military, uh, came from a very small number of very smart, clever guys that I can count on less than one hand that are the Mount Rushmore of cool cool guy canine in the military in present day. Okay. Are they uh, still around? Uh, I think uh, they're, they're all... Uh, I think they've, they've moved on to other things. Got but, it. Uh, but a guy named Shannon Krieger. Okay. Uh, um, I, um, from the uh, Soldiers of the Sea, a uh, guy named uh, Ike Eikenberry. Okay, I've heard that name. 
Jim Haggerty. Okay. Yeah, and then we have some uh, British friends that helped us along the way. Uh, um, James Blackie Blackmore, Nobby Noble, okay. uh, who we talked to on the phone. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. But that's that's a very small number of, of people set that up. What year was that? What year did this um, happen? I'll just give you a roundabout. Yeah. Uh, the, the concept, they, those smart guys uh, that I'm talking about, and I, I don't have permission to use two other names that I would love to mention. Understood. But, um, but uh, let's just say they saw things coming before they happened mm-hmm. because they're smart people and you're, uh, that's your tax dollars at work. Yeah. Uh, they had the concept prior to 9-11. So before 9-11 is when they started integrating. So how do we differentiate? Oh, when, the, when the concept came up, yeah. So uh, how do you differentiate between the dogs that your grandfather handled, right, the, the marine dogs, mm-hmm. and the dogs that were going back to World War One, even, mm-hmm. right, and the dogs we have now, the, these special ops dogs? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, my knowledge base came from police work. Right. Um, came from the so when I say the term uh, special ops, I include the police officers working on some of the uh, on some of the major departments and maybe smaller departments that, that really have their shit together. Right. Because that's what that's why the uh, the DOD grabbed me mm-hmm. because of my knowledge that that I got from being a police officer and training around the Mike deals. Uh, right. You know, people like that. Yeah. But, but where was that 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 difference because i think th- these dogs we're seeing now mm-hmm. the navy seal dogs the, the 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 special forces dogs the dogs coming out of it jumping out of an airplane with a guy on a parachute mm-hmm. getting into enemy territory and just really being heroes beyond words heroes in, in the game mm-hmm. this happened before 9 11 right mm-hmm. but what's the difference in those dogs compared to the dogs that have been in the military for 50 60 70 years so yeah so th- the military, uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, mm-hmm. it was they were backyard donated dogs. Okay, right, right. That were that did God's work. God yep. bless them. Okay, mm-hmm. but what was their job? Uh, so, uh, scout dogs that could smell an ambush, uh, and uh, you know, sniffing out uh, booby traps. Okay, uh, an alert system, right? Okay, uh, an alert, an alarm system. Got it. Uh, and then what police officers of America had been doing for years was. Uh, for lack of a better term, you know, of offensive combat with dogs, and that's uh, you, any good, any good SWAT team, tactical, or any uh, any department that has a good patrol dog system. Yeah, they use their dogs to locate and dominate the adversary. And they weren't doing that before in the military. In the military, um, no, not okay. not in any, not that I'm aware of. Okay, uh, were, were the dogs locating and dominating? And dominating, an ad- you mean an keeping this guy at bay? Either keeping him at bay. Uh, engaging him and in a fight mm-hmm. uh but not just a location tool but an actual dominate got it yeah got it and that so when that started coming around the military the department of defense goes to a guy like you and well says, the smart guys that, that were um the elite mm-hmm. uh it was their idea that the uh so it was at lackland uh, is the home of the military working dogs right they didn't contact me um, some of these other guys that I, that I mentioned earlier did. Understood, understood. Yeah. And you went in now with your background of the police canines mm-hmm. and, and a, a more aggressive, more assertive dogs and sort of bringing that into the military. Right, right. It's, it's a, it's a um, but you know what's funny is the dog that I wanted to work personally is the dog that I select in mm-hmm. my current job with DOD. Uh, Department of Defense, just so yeah. everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get the dog that I want personally to handle. That's the type of dog, mm-hmm. and it's not a one hundred percent fail uh, solution when you're testing dogs. You know, you have the right. the ones that you know that are when you test them and buy them. Then it's like the selection of a human being. You know, for they they make it through their right. selection, but then eh, you see things yeah. in training. Maybe I ought to find them another another job. You know, like the video Avi sent us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Did Avi Cohen sit in this chair, by the way? Avi Cohen did not sit in that chair, by what? the way. No, I'm oh, sorry. I had to, I had to frame that and memorialize it. This, did you know the big plexiglass thing we have it, it, with that chair? Yeah. That's the Avi Cohen chair. There's a hair of his on the back of that chair. Wow. Yeah, we've had it epoxied on. It's never going anywhere. Yeah, I want to. 
We'll look at that chair. I'll we could. I would gladly yield my hour so we could talk about Avi Cohen right or now. Or the chair. Yeah, we'll just, just talk chair. about the chair. The chair is enough to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but did you see the videos he sent? Yeah. He's insane, yeah. right? He's completely insane. Yeah, heart bigger than his brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the funny thing is his wife had no idea where he is. He's in, he's in Europe buying a dog. So we won't tell her. You're never going to know. No. I'm not, I'm not saying anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he, you know, he's a funny guy. But yeah. anyway. I've learned a lot off of Avi, you know. Like he's a good just, guy, yeah. You never quit learning. Never quit. You learn off everybody. Yeah. You know, I... I was so intrigued watching you, and I don't say it a lot because I've watched a lot of dog trainers, and I love watching dog tra- good dog training. I like watching bad dog, bad dog training too, but watching you with these dogs. Now, at that time, you were training a lot of elite special forces, and I, 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 I'm kind of walking on eggshells. I don't want to say like SEALs or, or, or no. special ops or anything like that because that would put you in a position where you'd have to say, I'm not allowed to disclose that, right? Like right, a- and... And um, these guys were just, uh, again, cool dog, cool guys with cool yeah. dogs. So, like, nobody would say they were, like, the top Navy SEAL dogs or the top no. special forces no, dogs. No, it wasn't like that. No, nobody was from either one of those organizations. None of those organizations kind of Nothing. Yep. Yeah. Nope. No specials. Okay, nothing. They're just cool guys. Cool guys, yeah. And keep our country safe. Yep. Right? Yep. And those are the guys you deal with every day. Right? Yeah, you know, and... and I am nothing, you know, we were talking about the martial arts stuff. Yeah. You know, I am the sword sharpener for the samurais. Yeah, That's sure. what I do. I'm nothing more than a, I, I keep that. And uh, any any of the good dog trainers that we have, we're the, we're the sword sharpeners that are honored to be to be doing, you know, working with yeah. who we work with. Yeah, but you, you it's, it's funny because you have to kind of stay away from those topics. But I know a little bit, like you're... You're like the samurai guy making the samurai sword that's putting it at the hands of the other samurai who's... There's a lot more that's going on there that, that you... I know you can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and the look shows me yeah. that you really can't talk about it. Yeah. But you, you... So, okay, so so these dogs, these dogs, they're, we're, you're sending them into incredibly difficult situations, right? I mean, and you've been you've been in battle. You've seen stuff that other people have never seen and will never see. And you can say the same thing about a lot of uh, police officers on the street. Without a doubt. Yep. Without a doubt. Yep. I have I- incredible admiration for our military in this country who keeps the entire world safe. Mm-hmm. Right? This is not about just the United States of America. This is the world. Mm-hmm. And people like you and people like these police officers that you're talking about and these, these dog handlers and these, these amazing soldiers are doing, in my opinion, God's work keeping the bad guys away. Yep. Right. But I want to talk about these dogs. So your selection process, we talked about that yesterday. And I was intrigued by it. Mm-hmm. You're going out, right? You're, you get an assignment from a special part of the government, of the military. You need five dogs, mm-hmm. right, for a special operation. Where are you going? What are you looking for? What, what, is your, what is your trained eye looking for in a dog that's going to say, this dog is going to do the job I need it to do? Mm-hmm. This dog is not going to, you know, he, he's going to get people out. He's, this dog is going to save lives. What's your criteria? What are you looking at? Same thing. If I was picking a, a person to be in an elite unit, I would look for the same criteria. Uh, number one, openness and works well with others. Doesn't mean that you have to be a friendly, handshaking person mm-hmm. or dog. Just open and friendly. Okay. Or not so much friendly. Open and... Accepting? Accepting and happy. Okay. That's the first thing I look for. Um, and then talent. Mm-hmm. And, and talent is? Talent is courage. Uh, talent is a work ethic. Okay. Um, it. It's, uh, that, can, that can go through, that, that, that can do the, the, oh, you know, we can go down the line of drives and yeah. instincts and drives. Let's uh, talk about that because I think yeah. drives are so fascinating, right? Yeah. People don't talk enough about it. Yeah. Let's talk about those drives for a second because I think that's the that's the dog. Besides fur, it's fur and drive, right? Yeah. yeah. What 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 are you looking for in that drive? Okay. So if I don't have if I don't have the openness and the happiness and the work well with others, that that's all in one. Yep. In one thing. If I don't have that, then I I, I don't test any farther. You pass the dog. Done. Like okay. if I if I get if the dog gives side eyes me, or uh, hackles a little bit, he's and he's done. That's just my style, and it works for me. Got it. Okay? Uh, then the next key for me is reckless abandon. Okay, let's talk. What does that mean? Putting um, um, just devil may care 
I care about satisfying my need to do what I love over my own safety. Like uh, okay. I will, I will, uh, I'm going forward, forward, forward. A dog can do two things. He can, he can jump forward or he can jump back. Right. I get the dog that jumps forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, I say I, I, but no, I a lot it. of good dog people right. know the same stuff I'm telling you right totally now. Totally understand. I yeah. understand. Yeah. But you're here. Yeah. So yeah. Reckless abandon. Uh, okay. And then uh, strong environmentals. Mm-hmm. Um, so strong environmentals means a dog that's not going to be sensitive to a, sh- a slippery floor, loud noises, lights, st- stairs, dark, stairs. being stuffed in a corner. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. And, but you know, one thing is I don't expect the total dog like to do everything perfect. You know, I, I like Jack Nicholson and a few good men when he says, I believe we have to, we, we have to train the lad. I think I remember seeing that somewhere Yeah, or reading that somewhere. Yep. So, uh, if a dog, I want to. I want to see recovery. Everybody's afraid of something. Right. Okay. And I, I'll, I'll buy that dog. He can, he can uh, not be a 10 on all across the board, but I want to see recovery. Can, can you keep moving forward? Are you an optimist versus a pessimist? Mm. You know? So can you take that experience that you just had that might have frightened you, scared you, or startled you, and recover and continue on? Yes. Because okay. everybody's afraid of something. Right. Everybody is. And so, you know, um, I... You're never going to find the dog that's a 10 across the board, but is he buildable? Can I build him? Right. Because people seem to think that military dogs are absolutely fearless and don't, nothing bothers them. But stuff does bother them, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you're going to find little... Uh, and, and again, I, I tell people my job as a dog trainer is to locate the holes and plug the holes. Mm. Okay? And make him better. You mm-hmm. know, uh, you can't... You can't masquerade it with... Uh, with makeup, you know, the makeup's going to come off in heat and the rain. Mm. So I plug the holes, but then I put them in the heat and the rain to see if the makeup falls off. Then we can't, you know, we can't use the dog. Right. Or, or we won't, he won't be right for us. Okay. Yeah. So just because he's not right for you, it might be right for somebody else yeah. too, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So, and there's a, I talked to an, a Pierre, I don't know if you saw the podcast where he talked about, he temperament tested for the Swedish military, but the idea was, is it a trained behavior, right? So now you can obviously look through and see, okay, this dog is environmentally sound, but he's been exposed, he's, 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 he's trained to be environmentally sound. And that's, that's a good to, point because right? you can, people can train for the test. Right. And I, I, change, uh, I change my test all the time. I never do it the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's when if they train for the test, it's your job to, to put the dog in situations right. that... Or you buy the dog and then you see it pretty soon when you come home that the dog that I bought over there isn't the same dog. Yeah. And yeah. You, know, you, you send him back. Okay. And what else? So, so those are the drives. You're looking for a real stability, looking for probably a good defensive, a, a really confident dog. Looking for the aggregate. You know? Okay. I, I, want, I want some sport aggression mm-hmm. and I want real aggression. Mm-hmm. And one thing I, I very rarely do, like uh, I don't initially uh, take equipment bites at first. I know they're going to do that. If I go to Europe yeah. and a dog's living in Europe, you know, I, I know he's going to. I want to see how he acts without me wearing an Everlast punching bag. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, yeah. and I made up a fake word. You okay. know, it's, you know, nemesis, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a word called nemonistic. No. I don't, so, I mean, I don't no, know. no. So I call it <laughs> nem- nemonistic. Okay. A nemonistic approach. You know, I, I will look at the dog and, you know, I don't, I'm not your buddy. Right. You know, I'm a nemesis. Yeah. And I see how they handle that. And, uh, I saw that when you when when I, when I watched you. Yeah, get a little personal with them. Yeah, and, and uh, see how they handle that, and then that's the the sec- the next thing I do in my test. You know, um, uh, and you know when I say the openness and all that, that's where the ball throws and the fun stuff happen. Where mm-hmm. I see speed to the ball, uh, um, you know, I see a lot in that in that phase where we're yeah. where we're checking the openness and the friendliness. Right? right, right. So, but then, but then, then I put the dog in a. Uh, in an uncomfortable or situation that doesn't look like the sport field. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to find something uh, and he can have the handler with him, but I just show him a look and do things and see if he, it's okay to, to avoid a little bit. That's you put me in a, right. in a bad situation by myself and somebody's being nemonistic to me. Yep. I'm going to look around and go, who's, who's around here to help me. <laughs> right, who's right, got right. my back. So that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But, but you can either jump forward or jump back. If you, right. If, if the jump back is, but there's still that recovery, right? There's, recovery is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at that. Yeah. 
because you, you and I think it's important to say that you're doing this in fairness to the dog. You don't want to take a dog that can't handle this kind of work yeah. and put them in there, right? I mean, that's got to be the worst feeling right, in the world. Right. For and you, yeah, and that that's where the uh, uh, the the other stuff, you know, that it comes into play. It, there's there's a lot of little things, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you, a good dog and every good dog trainer that's watching this, you know. Uh, the longer you test, the less you know. Yeah. And a good dog will stand out. You'll know him when you see him. Instantly. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about him. Yeah. Even if you change your mind halfway through, you still kind of go, God, that's, there's still that great stuff in there that, yeah. that I saw originally. Yeah. That's that. yeah. So so those are the drives. That's, that's what you're looking for in that dog, right? Yeah. That's what you. That's the dog you want. And that's really your starting point. Yeah. Right at that point. You still got to train the lad. Right, right, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. And now, so once you get that dog, and let's say that dog is a year or two old at this point, yeah. would you say? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then where do you go from there? Now you take the dog, you buy the dog, you bring the dog back to the States or back to your training location. Mm -hmm. And what happens now? Like, what's the, what's the next phase that this dog is going to go through? He's in a kennel, he lands, yeah. you take him out take him for a walk, play ball with him a little yeah. bit, and now we're going to start making you into a soldier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Test on environmentals first. Put him in a lot of different situations. See mm -hmm. if he reacts and see how he reacts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there may be a, a little bit of balking is okay if he recovers, right? What, is, what do you mean balking? Um, oh, my God. Oh, open stairs. The open um, metal okay. stairs. You start to walk up and he stops and I, I don't like this. Got it. Uh, well, you know, let me take a little treat and... Help you along. Just, yeah, right. I'm going to help a dog. You know, like, uh, yeah. it's not going to be, eh, you fail because you won't go up the open <laughs> right. stairs. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes if you buy a dog or that dog that does everything and shows no bulk at anything, some, you know, maybe that, that might be a little more dog than you want to handle sometimes. Mm. Maybe not, but I'm just saying, you know, be, yeah. be careful what you wish for. You know, some some dogs that are just... 10 across the board, maybe they're going to be. Uh, yeah, do, does that happen, right? Do you get those dogs that are so balls to the wall, let's call it, that they just really can't be handled by a... Yeah, I've seen it in police work, you know, okay. yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but, um, you know, we all like the, as much drive and power as mm -hmm. we can. I, yeah. I'm not, I would love that dog, but we got to make sure, like, is that, that openness sacrificed right. by, by a dog with, with that much uh, testosterone. Mm -hmm. you know. Does that openness ever interfere with a dog's ability to go in and get a bad guy? No, I, it, not in my experience. It hasn't been because that's where the nemesistic, like how does he handle a nemesis? Okay. Yeah. But, but how is that person a nemesis? Like in other words, you, you, that's there's a guy laying over there and he's, you know, he's got a gun, he's waiting and, and hiding and you're sending him in. How does that dog not go? Oh, well, that's, he's a friend. I'm open. Training. Okay, okay. In the picture that, that I, that I, that I, um, you know, a funny thing about people down, uh, people laying down, uh, um, what is that? I'm trying to think of the word, um, From passive resistance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A passive, that's your most dangerous guy. You talked about that. I was, I'm fascinated the by that. Most, Can, let's talk about yep. that. Right. Why is, why isn't the person who's running at the dog more of a threat? Not, not visually whatever but realistically then the dog the guy just laying in the corner it just seems that doesn't seem to yep. the average person to be well that's where uh i know as a police officer i've had a few situations where people have tried to kill me and it and i think a lot of the cops uh i think a mike gooseby would tell you the same thing the yep. guy that usually is dangerous is that guy laying in wait huh. down and motionless or the uh or the passive resistor like uh he looks compliant mm -hmm. but uh, when you make the approach, uh, something bad might happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you, and I saw your training for that. I know you can't, I don't want you to tell secrets or, or anything like that. And I don't want people going out and going, I'm going to train my own police dog. It's mm -hmm. BS. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, talk a little bit about that journey of taking the dog from being the really shining black belt of the dojo to becoming the special forces guy that's going to go in and get the terrorist, and I know we're not going to talk about names, but who's going to go in and get that that guy? What what's that that point where the where the dog finally says, "Okay, I got this." Yeah, right. You're sending that dog in, and he's going ahead of the team. Yeah, right. And he's out there, and he's got that. I mean, I, it's it's so awesome, yeah. right? When I see a dog in front of a group of men, 
all in combat gear going into a building and doing what they do. And I know you're training that. I, I, we can admit that. Yeah. But what is that? Like what, what, how do you push that? How do you get the dog to do that, that to build that extra confidence? Because it's not about biting on a suit. It's not about biting no. on a sleeve. It's not about running around a blind or you know, going after a decoy with tin cans. You yeah. know? It's completely different, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How do you transfer that? How does that, be, how does that evolve? Okay. My opinion, the right dog is only going to do what he's going to do because he thinks he's going to have fun and he thinks he can't lose. Okay? Yeah. Th there's a lot of trust. Um, um, again, reference another dog trainer. Mike Deal told me a long time ago that uh, making a strong dog is like making a, ch a strong child. You make them feel loved and protected and they grow up strong. Yeah. So that it stems from the relationship the dog has with the handler. And then I just show them that people on the ground can annoy you not hurt you okay annoy you do you know what i'm saying I there's did, certain yeah. drills you saw me do yep uh little annoying things to the dog so when he sees a person on the ground i'm going to dominate him before he does something annoying to me okay the, the dog is going to dominate is saying he's going to dominate i'm going to dominate person. that i've, I've got to go dominate that because in the dog world when the adversary is on the ground the encounter is over you've seen them when right they, when they get into it and the the uh the other dog rolls on his back and submits. Okay, Over. get up. All sins immediately forgiven. We're going to go off we're together. Right. In our world, when somebody is on the ground, the encounter's just begun and the encounter is very dangerous. So we have to be counterintuitive to what the dog's nature is. That right. on the when they're if they're laying motionless on the ground, your encounter's just has just begun. Yeah. So dominate that adversary, mm. or he's going to annoy you, and that comes through doing annoying little things to the dog. Yeah. I never want to. I never want to do have a traumatic event with the dog because I want to show him that he's so badass. The most anybody's going to do to you is annoy you because you're above, you're too badass to let anything traumatic happen to you. I mean, that's a huge piece, yeah. right? That's huge, yeah. right? You would think these dogs are, are dumb, you know, you got to fight. But what you're doing is you're building this strength step by step by yeah. step through positive association, yeah. right? Whether that's letting him bite, letting him win, or whatever, but it's not this. It's again, again, it goes against everything. I think the average dog owner, which is why this is so interesting. How do you build the baddest mother in the world? You give them that confidence. Yeah, and fun. Like to me, the, it, my I'm a fun person. You yeah, know, you I'm, are. I'm yeah. fun driven. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. And to me, I always say, if it ain't, if it ain't, if it ain't fun, it ain't worth doing. Right. And I that's agree. the way I train the dog. So I want them. I want the dog to have fun. Yeah. And. And, uh, but he just learns that you just have to show him that, you know, it's over. It's not, you know, when he's, when he's on the ground, mm -hmm. do something. Yeah. D don't. And again, the, the scariest guy to encounter is, is the down motionless person when for, you're a police officer. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah say. Oh yeah. So for, as a, as a police officer, as a, as a special forces, elite fighter, anybody that's still that guy that you're more worried about that guy laying on the ground. Yeah. Or, or concealed, you know, concealed uh, evading capture, mm -hmm. be it a criminal or, or anybody yeah those are the dangerous people so if i was in a bad first of all with our background and, and our friendship i know if i was going to be in a really bad situation i want to have you on my side right because we're going to get out of there alive i hope so we'll try <laughs> which i really yeah. Yeah. we'll make a lot of friends and, and hang and, out and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun doing it <laughs> a lot of fun doing it yeah. um and and that's really you know what your friend who talked to us on the phone today mentioned um you're the guy who trains the dogs to get the people out right yeah. that's your job yeah. your job isn't to make a man stop or to do this or to do that but your job is to make to, to give the dog the tools to get your people out yeah get get everybody home safe get everybody home safe yeah you know yeah. and i think if, if when when you send a dog to another part of the, the middle east right where there's really bad evil people um do you worry? Do you think shit that something could happen to this dog? Absolutely, and I, I worried about it when I work in Anderson, Indiana. Mm. You know, uh, Same it's thing. not. It's like to me the whole term special ops. You know, um, I think it's again equal among sure. any, anybody that's going through that dark door to hunt a bad man or going to that dark field, be it a police officer, for sure, uh, a homeland security guy, a military guy. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're all doing the job that people don't want to do. Yeah. You know, it goes on. You know, it's, it's interesting. What were we talking about? How 
Oh, your sausage analogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds a little weird right there, but um, the, so- the sausage analogy, how it, it, it doesn't look pretty, but it tastes good. Yeah, everybody, I you know, train in the right dog mm-hmm. or good police work. You know, it, right. it, 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 it's like making sausage. It may not be pleasant, pleasing to the eye to watch, but it, when it's done, everybody likes to taste. Everybody likes to taste, yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so, so you send a dog to... Um, to another area look do they continue training when they're there once they're deployed yes okay so what does that look like what does that training look like and is it different like you're training a dog in north carolina in texas in southern california now you send this dog to afghanistan right hypothetically 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 right i'm not saying you you would send it with a special forces in, in afghanistan but if you did yeah right does that environment then change the weather, the atmosphere, the, yeah. the culture of people? And you just right? said it were a- atmospherics. Okay. Yeah. You just, you just, uh, you, you do train there, but um, it's not, I don't overcomplicate it, right? So a police dog or one of the cool guy canines, really, if you th- look at all the events in IPO, right? Mm-hmm. Complicated. If you've ever been to a ring trial, impressive. Very. Very complicated, a lot to do. A lot. Well, my sport as a tactical as a tactical dog handler, I got three events: run in house, locate, dominate; run in outside area, locate, dominate; maybe run to a vehicle, locate, dominate; okay. and then the halftime show is some detection if we have to do it. Okay, okay, that's our sport, so it's it's not overly complicated. I think it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, you're you're very humble. Yeah, which is really interesting. But really, right? truly, though, if you think like yeah, uh, I know. If, if you watch, you know, when we go to the IPO field to train, mm-hmm. that's precision, man. Right. You know, and, right. And and so is ring, KMPV. Uh, it's precision. A lot of hours, mm-hmm. years, right? Yeah. But there's a big difference between it. I, I got to say because okay, IPO. I love IPO. I'm the biggest fan of IPO. I've had Vadim Plotsker. I've had you know Avi. You know Frank Phillips, the the legends the, the, that I think are, are my heroes in the sport. Um, on but IPO and and Avi said something interesting based on my work with the shelters. He said you don't know what you're going to get, mm-hmm. and I think you and I are on the same boat on that, right? Like you don't really know. Okay, yeah, essentially it's not it's not complicated, right? Mm-hmm. It's send in a building, find and dominate, mm-hmm. but but you don't know, right? Go ahead, you, yeah. yeah. So situational nerves. Right. That's what you got to have with a cool guy, tactical dog. Okay. okay. Situational nerves where um, he he has to perform on a training field. He has to perform whatever, wherever you put him. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, the sport, the sport dogs uh, differ in the, tra- right. in the training. Right. Yep. So yeah, the situational nerves, like uh, do, doing the task, no matter what the, the situation is. So when you take a dog to a, to a, an environment that's that he's not used to you've got to get him mm-hmm. performing in that environment okay right? and some dogs don't possess good situational nerves they just don't right. they're like people like does that like, happen like you send a dog to another part of yeah the world? and we've seen it we've seen it uh just like people there's uh uh people that perform great in training right and then you get them in a real situation and hey maybe we need to find you another job you know you weren't you weren't made for this and you see that in the dogs you do see that okay uh, yep and 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 seen it in police dogs seen it in military dogs mm-hmm. uh that the dog in training no matter how much you do and you try to mitigate any faults yeah but sometimes it doesn't show up until they get into an actual environment and they don't they don't cut it right and it you know it happens with people too right um if you put me in heights, I hate heights. You're not going to see. I do too. You're not going to see performance out of me. Yeah, I don't like heights. Like, yeah, freaks me out. Yeah, but you fl- you jumped out of airplanes. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> Which is really okay. Tell me that story. <laughs> so, I had a, a a guy that lived in my city that was a plank holder with SEAL Team Six. Okay. He he had he had gotten out plank holder. He was one of the originals. Wow. And he was a firefighter, and I was talking to him, and I said, "Hey, would you ever consider skydiving with a dog?" He said, yeah. So then Jim Haggerty from LAPD, good friend of mine, I mentioned him earlier mm-hmm. as one of the people on the Mount Rushmore of cool dog canine, cool guy canine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Haggerty said, we have a jump master right here in LAPD canine. His name's uh, Sergeant Steve Groover. So we went to China Lake, or not China Lake, um, in Victorville, California. Yep. We took my dog and Steve Groover met us out there. 
and they built the rigging for the skydive into the dog right there on the airfield in about two hours. They sewed it, and there happened wow. to be a naval test parachutist there that my buddy knew that came from China Lake, and they built the rig right there. Wow. And I said... Uh, Had anybody ever done any skydiving with yeah, dogs before? Yeah, I think so. I think the military did okay. uh, y- years ago, So, but I know nobody was doing it back then. Right, so okay. So I said, so it was, we're going to do a cool cover shot, and I said, I don't want my dog to do anything I wouldn't do. I want to jump at the same time, and Steve sure. and I went tandem. right. And he gave me like a 10 minute class on what to do, you know, just. You've never jumped out of a never, plane before? Never, 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 never. Uh-huh. So my dog and the and uh, the, uh, <laughs> the former Navy SEAL, we got it in the air. I, Steve and I, I'm hooked to Steve. And uh, the SEAL was hooked to my dog. And here we go. Uh-huh. What can go wrong? <laughs> and boom, out we go out of the airplane and we're falling. And Steve hits the parachute. It pops for a minute. And I hear him. Because you get a silence when you get under canopy, and I hear him say, oh, F, uh-huh. we twist, and boom, we're falling again. And I'm like, oh, great, this is the way it ends. Uh-huh. Like, it figures. And so we had, there was a malfunction with the parachute, and we did a cutaway. And this, this is Stoop's luck. Like, who else does that happen to the very first time? <laughs> right. You know, like, my dog had a marvelous time. But, uh-huh. You know, I had my near-death oh, experience, man. and so that's how that went. And, uh but you had the reserve, you popped the reserve. He did. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like, I'd already, you know, was like, this is Set it. Yeah, this, right. this is how it ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So, so the heights is your issue. And I, I hate heights. Like, I don't think I could jump out of a plane. I mean, if it was going to fall, I, I would And do snakes. It. Yeah, snakes don't bother me that much. You don't like snakes? No, I hate them. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah. I don't like, I don't love them. Yeah. Like, I can't handle them, but I mean, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Out of planes is the worst. Yeah. Spiders? Yeah, they don't They're bother me. Spiders, right. So, so these the, the, this this um, idea that the dog gets out there and can't handle the pressure of going into a building of of, of maybe somebody going after it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, when that happens, and we talked about a story that I don't think you can repeat about the dog that went in and mm-hmm. was playing with a rag. Can you talk mm-hmm. about that story? Uh, we'll we have to if we mention no details about it. Can you? Yeah, mention? yeah, yeah. And we won't say whether it was police work or or special or, forces yeah, or we'll whatever say, military. Um, we'll say nothing about so the experience it. of a dog was, uh, um, the dog went into a structure and uh, grabbed a hold of a blanket on the floor, and then uh, the handler recalled it. You know, it must be clear because nobody didn't hear anybody get bit. And right. And a couple of good guys went in, and shots were fired, and it was because uh, the dog got more engaged in a equipment fixation so that's why um you know we train i train good dog trainers train man is primary mm-hmm. uh don't pick and if i can mention one more name you can mention every so name you want i love it my aggression sensei bar none that's taught me more about dog aggression is guy harston mm-hmm. and he's the owner of hard dog requisites amazing but gear yeah the best i'm a fan me too but guy has been my sensei i was lucky enough to meet him as a young, as a very young guy, mm. and he, most of my stuff, I plagiarized Guy Harston. Wow, yeah, that's a huge compliment to Guy. Oh yeah, but the guy love he loves you too. I mean, love he was him. on the phone with me this morning, and yeah. you know, I know, I know he yeah. loves you. So. And he's he's uh, a guy that doesn't share his knowledge with a lot of people. I'm just fortunate that that he's my friend. Yeah, but anyhow, so it was a. Uh, uh, after that, I I was speaking to Guy, and this happened pretty early in 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 the the conflict mm-hmm. and uh and he was always you know uh was big on a, a man is primary don't slip equipment mm-hmm. um not for sport dogs but for what I do, don't slip equipment when yeah. it's on the ground it's dead don't touch it okay because you know we don't want a dog going in shaking pillows right pose. go for the man and so i want i want to really talk about it because i think there's a huge piece here that uh, you know i've dealt with some very low not low level but but personal protection dogs, but there's such a big difference between a, a pet dog, a sport dog, a high-level sport dog, maybe a personal protection dog, and then the dogs you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. There's a huge difference, right? Most dogs, I think even protection dogs, are very equipment-oriented, right? You drop the sleeve. I mean, today we had Goofy out there. Drop the sleeve. He's barking at the mm-hmm. sleeve. Oscar's over here, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got to get this dog to focus on getting off the equipment. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that you really do, right? That's one of the things you have to do. 
to get these dogs to be able to do a job. Mm-hmm. Do you often see, and I think I know the answer to this question, a dog that is going to go in and see a person who doesn't have that hidden sleeve or that sleeve or that, you know, that heavy jacket on. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're just wearing, you know, some kind of a cultural clothing that they might wear, let's say at, in the Middle East or something. That's harder to bite, right? Like I'm seeing flowing clothing. I'm not mm-hmm. seeing a big uh, Michelin man, mm-hmm. right? How do these dogs learn this? Like how do they get to, and you don't have to give away your secrets, but mm-hmm. how do you get that dog to understand to bite the guy in the baggy shirt not the michelin man in the three leather jackets mm-hmm. um do you said it earlier through repetition and training mm-hmm. um it is not really that it's not really that complicated again make sure the dog learns to learns the picture mm-hmm. and that he's not hunting for equipment he's, he's hunting for a human mm-hmm. that if he does not locate and dominate when he sees it it's going to annoy him okay and, and i addressed that earlier does that answer your question it on kind that? of it annoys him but it doesn't hurt him right i like right. that i really right, like right. that if, if it's a traumatic event the dog's not going to want to do it he's not going to how many times have i see i've seen it in ipo where dogs they get whacked when they come in the blind to try to build aggression and the dog's like i'm not going back in that blind last time i went in there i got hit mm-hmm. and the way you were working these dogs that i watched um, and these were serious animals. These weren't just like a, a sport dog coming off the field. Mm-hmm. These were like muzzled, restrained dogs mm-hmm. by handled by very, very skilled handlers. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were working with them like you were conditioning a, 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 a boy who's becoming a soldier. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I was so impressed with on that. Um, but the, going back to that story with the dog that went in the the, the building, he was doing a building search, from what mm-hmm. I remember you said, mm-hmm. and. Um, he had a camera on or something and they watched him and he was shake. He shook a rag mm-hmm. and would, and then your opinion, you said then he's in the, in the people, the, the cool guys, mm-hmm. their then opinion was, well, then there can't be anybody in there cause he's playing with a rag mm-hmm. on the ground. Right. So mm-hmm. that's entertaining to him. So there's no people. Mm-hmm. Was that, what caused that in that dog? Was that dog? Is, Nothing is wrong he, with the, you know, that dog ended up dying a hero. Okay. Awesome. I he love did that later. You know, he was a new dog. So, Every every dog that I get, Robert, is is equipment fixated. I buy from the sport fields. Love them. I know you do. Love I sports. know you do. So what I my job as the sword sharpener is to teach them that man is primary. Mm-hmm. That, that that that's your power source that you need to plug into. That's, How long does that take? Depends on the dog, but mostly not not that long. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just uh, again annoyance, annoying them a little bit, and teaching them that you know. The only reason a dog does anything is to make his situation better, to improve his situation. And avoid the worst. So it will improve your situation to go primarily to man mm-hmm. and not fixate on equipment. Okay. 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 So, and once they get to know you, your dog, we talked about this in, and I know we can get it. You and I are going to have multiple conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing you do is you've trained very high end personal protection dogs Mm -hmm. like not the dog that you're going to see on the internet advertised for you know whatever you know sign up here like they got to find you they got to search you out and you're going to help them get a dog that is going to do what these dogs in hypothetically the military the police or the cool guys can do but they also can live with a family yeah i right? call them coffee shop dogs okay yeah. so let's talk about that because that's that's a dog that could be on the top navy seal team it could be the top swat team it could be my dog protecting my house mm-hmm. right and there's no nothing about those dogs that makes them all oh, these dogs are so dangerous or this or that right i mean unless you're posing a threat mm-hmm. So how does that work? Because now they're not focused on equipment. Like if I can say to somebody, well, the dog's not going to bite your kid unless your kid has a, has a, has a mm-hmm. shits and sleeve. Mm-hmm. But you're training them not to do that because a lot of those personal protection dogs that I've trained, if I go at them without a sleeve, they're not doing anything. Yeah. They're looking for the sleeve. Yep. And those can be perfectly good obedience dogs. Yep. But you're not doing that. So here's there's one difference, though when I'm selecting a personal protection dog for a family, remember that reckless abandon we talk about? Mm-hmm. So what I say about these dogs is a good dog is a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause they're always wanting to get in there. They're busy. Mm-hmm. And I always say that, which makes them a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. makes them awesome at what they do. Yeah. I don't, I don't want that gland in the personal protection dogs. 
right? Okay. Okay. So that's one criteria that that I don't that I don't want that total reckless abandoned busy dog for a family. Okay. You don't want that. So that's I don't want it because they, they got to live. You know, you want to live with you want a dog that no. a family dog. You want it to, to be a joy to yeah. be around. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to live with these. And dogs. so. Uh, the criteria that is common in what I would buy in police dogs is the openness, mm-hmm. the talent, and the courage, mm-hmm. right? But and the situational nerves. However, I don't need the reckless abandon, the busyness, Got it. the activity-driven type of animal. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? It's they're higher maintenance for a family. Yeah, it's hard to live with, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you a lot of times rule out dogs like Malinois in there because they do have that? crazier drive with it they're they're more busy well, than let's say a german we've seen shepherd. german shepherds though that are are, uh, are, are busy 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 yeah. so uh i wouldn't turn down a, a good malinois okay uh, but i just have to make sure that uh you know he's not too busy yeah yeah so let me ask you this if you had let's say hypothetically you're training a dog that's going to go into a situation in a, in a foreign land where there's bad things happening what does that dog's daily life look like Right. Well, number one, they live. They live with with the handler. Like uh, my last trip, I had my dog. He slept in bed with me on uh, the base, wherever we were. Wherever you were. Yeah, my buddy. Anyway. So it's one hundred percent daddy time. It's awesome. Yeah. No, they love it. Uh, they're we're watching movies together. <laughs> uh, you take for walks and oh, play with it, them. Yeah. And... Yeah. It's it's fun. Yeah. They 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 have a they have a good life. Wow, and so there. So, what is if let's say you're on a wherever on a base somewhere, mm-hmm. um, and you're not was that word I would look for deployed? Like you're not on a mission or something, yeah. right? So you're you might be on the base for a few days or a week or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, because you're not leaving the base to go do something mm-hmm. important. Um, what is what are you doing? I mean, I know you're you're eating, you're working out, you're mm-hmm. getting, you're keeping, you're honing your skills, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So does a dog go for walks and get to play ball and get absolutely? Training? It's a, it's a fun fest. It's a total fun yeah. fest. Yeah, and I don't want to mis uh, misportray my world. Uh, I'm the I'm the again I'm the sword sharpener. The right the cool guys are going out doing cool stuff. Uh-huh. You know I've been lucky enough to tag along, uh-huh. but but uh, my life is is making the dog's life fun while he's over there and also working on the situational nerves. Okay, so you that's know? another piece, right? Yeah. You've got to keep them sharp. Yeah, on, well, not sharp nerves, but you know, like you'd have to keep them tuned. Yeah, to where they're at. Right. And uh, and then we 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 uh, we work on our little three events in the sport. Okay. Running the running the building, locate, dominate, running open area, locate, dominate. Yeah. And when they locate, dominate, or they're running the areas, are they they're sent tra- they're scenting for the yep. for the person? Yep. That's a basic, just scent work, just a, yeah. a coning, just yeah. open yeah. air air tra- that, or air tracking. Nothing that you wouldn't. See training domestically with law enforcement. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you do the explosive detections. Mm-hmm. Right. They have to, yeah. they, most of the dogs, are they most of the dogs dual purpose dogs like that? For the most part. They yeah. are. Yeah. And okay. I think the majority of American police dogs are dual purpose, right? If you were to hazard No, I don't think, I don't think a, some of them are, but not a lot of them are. Okay. Yeah. And then they're, they're definitely not dual detection dogs. I mean, they're always going to be, you know, they use one for bombs, one for, <gasps> for drugs. But um, so, when that dog is over there, what is his, um, like, okay, so he sleeps with you, hangs out with you. What do they eat when they're there? Like, um, depends on who's handling the dog. I break every rule that you <laughs> yeah. ever read in the dog book. Like, right. if I have potato chips, my dog's going to get a potato chip. But okay. uh, they'll do eat. They kibble? Like, do they bring just food? A high, just a high-grade dog food. Okay. You know, uh, uh, um, and that's have, supplied by the military? Yes, but we have an awesome veterinarian staff. Right work. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, oh, they're aw- they're awesome. Okay, and I'd love to say their names, but but uh, yes. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, okay. but uh, they're awesome people, and so they make sure that our dogs are the best fed. And are they over? If you're deployed in another area of the world, that vet staff comes too. Yes, some well they don't come. They, they if uh, they come periodically. Okay, and then uh, there's there's uh, veterinarian support throughout the world for for the U.S. military. They do it right. Wow. Yeah. Well, the U.S. military, but I think the, the so vet, but perfect. the vet staff that I work with at uh, with with uh, at Cool Guy Canine, that we we've got the best in the world. Wow, yeah, they're awesome. And does the dog? So, how long will the dogs? Um, Janet wrote down all these different questions. Mm-hmm. Um, how many feedings per day? Like, do they feed twice? They do twice, twice a day. A day. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. and they get. The, we talked about the diet, high quality dog food. Mm-hmm. Um, 
flea control? Yep, flea, heartworm, heartworm, and uh, flea and tick. Okay, and then vaccinations for rabies, distemper, yep. parvo, and stuff like yep. that. Do, is it hard? Because when you're in a different area of the world, you go, oh, well, there might be uh, uh, leptospirosis over here, or there might be, you know, a uh, heartworm over here, or, you know, uh, uh, Lyme disease here. So you're just going to take precautions and make sure they're covered for everything. And that's why we have a vet staff because they make sure that we have everything we need mm. and we're, we're lucky. So yeah, I've never had a, uh, an illness, anything yeah. we couldn't get a handle on. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And those dogs, when they're deployed, I mean, obviously these guys, the cool guys that we're talking about, um, they've got first aid kits, something yeah, happens everything. to the and dog, the, they're on. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, have you ever had any like in, Let's say other areas of the world, snake issues with dogs, dogs getting bit by snakes. I had one dog. Yep. Really? Yep. Yeah. What kind of, what was, can you say? Well, you don't have to give details, but I don't know what kind of snake it was. But he got bit by a poisonous snake. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And he lived. In training. Oh. Also, it was, it was in training or training okay. situation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it was, uh, we had to retire the dog pretty harrowing, you know, that what he went through his recovery. And again, all praise to our, to, to our, to our awesome. medical staff. Yeah, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, but he actually, uh, retired after that he didn't he didn't come back from it oh man yeah he lived i mean he lived a fruitful life yeah, a, yeah as yeah. a family dog well for sure yeah yeah, yeah. But yeah he didn't but, have to work anymore but he was done yeah wow. duty wise and it I was that hard on him yeah oh yeah yeah and uh it was uh uh yeah an odd odd event but wow. yeah so um I, I in recent events i saw with the stuff that was going on in the middle east um some people were critical of the dogs being pulled out and they said why are they pulling the dogs out and I thought, man, these dogs are the heroes. We need to get these dogs out of here. And I think the military has taken such great steps lately to give these dogs that importance. Because there was times, wasn't it in Vietnam and World War II, they would just dispatch, they would just... That was Vietnam, I think, wasn't that? I saw that documentary, it was so heartbreaking. Oh, yeah, so sad. Yeah, those they're just putting the dogs down there. Yeah. And I think World War II, they did that did too. Did they really? Yeah. Okay. World War II, they, were, they put the dogs down because they couldn't bring them back. And now I think, I mean, God bless the U.S. military yeah. that they said these are equivalent to soldiers, just yeah. like canine cops. You know, they're yeah. cops. Yeah. And they get those same rights. And that were, I was so proud of the U.S. military yeah. for bringing back these dogs and, and seeing them get on those planes because anybody who's against that, it's just, I mean, it's just infuriates me. Yeah. I mean, I'm just so happy that happened. And it had to warm your heart to yeah. see that, you know, that your students yeah. are getting, you know, what they need. Yeah. Yeah. And a fruitful life, you know, they deserve that. Yeah. yeah. How old, like how long will a dog work in the, in the mill, in, okay, the special, the cool guys, how yeah. long will a. Uh, I, I don't think we work them into the ground. We, we, we retire them at a young enough age where they can go chase rabbits in the backyard. Okay. Yeah. And was that like 10, 11 I think less time than that. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, Even less. Yeah, and it probably depends on the dog. Like if the dog's trying to get older and stuff, then they kind of retire them earlier, right? Or yeah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, they they don't we don't work them into old age. That's good. Totally. Yeah. That's good. So I know you can't talk about like if I said like have you trained dogs for any like the SEAL teams? You couldn't. Right, I wouldn't say. You couldn't say yes or no. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I maybe maybe I could say, but I wouldn't say. You wouldn't say. Yeah. You can't you can't acknowledge or deny no, it. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Or Marines or anything. Right. Or right. SWAT teams or anything. You're just gonna hold that straight face and yeah. just say you can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's good because you hold a really good straight face. Poker. I'm not a good poker player. No, no, you're a good no, you yeah. are a good poker player because yeah. you got that look like, okay, I can't See. tell you. And I can't say it because you'll kill me. Yeah. But uh <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'll take you back to Gold's gym tomorrow. <laughs> like I smoked you today. See, that's should have made video of that. Should have made. I, I would have destroyed it. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even. You were running all around the the, the gym trying to get more plates. I couldn't do for it for me. For you, not for me. Yeah, no, yeah. I was just yeah. doing the bar. Yeah. I was stretching. You hurt me today. I was. I, <laughs> as long as it's not emotional. We did tell everybody we to Gold's Gym Venice, where all the big Gold's people are. Gym Venice. Yeah. And we're going back tomorrow. The Mecca. Maybe meet Michael Hearn. Michael Hearn. Yeah. Mike. Can't Mike. Wait. Mike's a big guy. Yeah. And he's a very big supporter of the military and cool guys. I have his shirts. Yeah. He's power, a power bodybuilding. <laughs> here's, here's the plug. Yeah. Well, there yeah. he is. Okay. Yeah. He's got to love that. Yeah. Um, is there anybody that you, and, and I want to get into this more tomorrow on um, training and stuff like that, but let, let's leave that for our next podcast because I want to talk about some of these guys I see online 
You know, it annoys me as a dog trainer just in regular circles. It's got to drive you up a wall when you see these guys who are online talking about their special ops, their this, their that. I mean, just a teaser because we're going to talk about it tomorrow, right? But how much does it get under your skin when you see... I, I had a guest on who was a Navy SEAL, and I said, I said how much is annoying? He said, well, he goes, there's been 6,000 SEALs in the history of the teams. Mm -hmm. He said, I know all 250,000 of them. <laughs> you know, I thought yeah. that was the most brilliant yeah. line ever. Yeah. How much does it piss you off to see these people making money on the backs of real heroes who really do this stuff? Yeah, it's, it, it pisses me off. It's right? upsetting. And, and uh, I think my colleagues that are, that are uh, alongside of me agree. Yep. And yeah. How, I mean, how do you even make, how do you make sense of that? I mean, uh, well, I say empty barrels make the most noise. I really do. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Well, that's going to be our topic for the, for the next time we talk because, um, it's, it's just so it's disturbing to me. Yeah. You know, when I see the work you do and these other people that I have seen and talked to do, and then other people out there talking about how they're these heroes, these, these warriors and stuff like that yeah. are nothing. Yeah. You know, so all right, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, is there anybody, any special people you want to thank? Any military organizations or anything? No, because you don't know them, right? God bless America. And God bless America. God bless our police officers out there. And our military. And our military. Yeah. Every every military and every police Anybody officer. that puts something bigger than themselves. Amen. Does that. Yeah. I've, I mean, where are my blue line? There it is. There's nothing I support more than our military and our police in yep. this country. God bless them. So, All right, thanks. We're going to have another great chat after I kick your ass in the gym tomorrow. Dream on. <laughs> okay.